Yes guys, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel and welcome to the December fixtures. Yes, the big festive period is about to begin and I'm sure there are going to be plenty of fixtures for you to keep an eye on on over the Christmas period. But uh, yes, welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel. Welcome back to the Premier League predictions match week 11 we are in now, which is going to be very, very interesting for sure. So let's have a quick look at how we did last week. I only got five points last week. It wasn't a very good week. Did get one perfect score, and that was Manchester City successfully beating Burnley by five goals to nil. I actually was one of the ones that predicted that. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased about that. Pretty pleased about that. Top scorer in the comments was Shane O'Donnell, and Shane O'Donnell got nine points, so very, very well done, Shane. Uh, I will leave the updated table in the description. Uh, so you can go and have a look for yourselves. But let's go into match week 11. And again, one fixture definitely dominates the proceedings. It is the North London derby between Tottenham and Arsenal. That is going to be a fantastic game on Sunday. So we'll get on to that one. But uh, first things off, kicking things off on Friday, it is Aston Villa against Newcastle United. And the last five between the sides have resulted in one win to Villa, one win to Newcastle and three draws. The last result was a 2 0 win to Aston Villa. Oh, Aston Villa. So, so unlucky against West Ham. So, so unlucky. Um, it has to be said, West Ham did survive a bit of an onslaught at the end. Um, Grealish, fantastic goal. Um, but you have to say that defensively for the two goals it wasn't great, it wasn't great for Aston Villa. But yet again, VAR has intervened in a decision that I I honestly can't understand. Is his hair offside? Like is his sleeve offside? I mean that it was an absolutely ridiculous decision. And even then, Ogbonna's got a hand around his neck, Watkins' neck. So if you you, you know, that I, I think that should have been another penalty, but uh, there we go. But to Aston Villa were very, very unlucky against West Ham. Newcastle United coming off the back of a 2-0 win over Crystal Palace. Believe it or not, every Newcastle fan I saw on the social media were slain. Steve Bruce, Steve Bruce this, Steve Bruce that. But the thing is, he gets you results. He gets you results. 2-0 away at Crystal Palace is a great result. Had Callum Wilson back on the score sheet. And even you had Joe Linton on the score sheet as well. Wow. <laughs> so that was very, very good for Newcastle United fans as well. So I'm going to go for an Aston Villa win. I think they're due a victory. Um, been very unlucky quite recently. I'm actually going to go for Aston Villa to win this one. Going to go for Aston Villa 2, Newcastle United 0. I'm going to go for it. And the Saturday lunchtime game is Burnley against Everton. The last five between the sides resulted in three wins to Everton and two wins to Burnley. And the last result was a 1-0 win to Burnley. Well, yeah, Burnley don't play Manchester City very much often. And I'm pretty sure they're pretty glad about that because it was a day to forget. Yes, you can say City were very, very clinical. But it was a day to forget for Bailey Peacock Farrell. Made his Premier League debut and he's putting five out of the back of the net. I think there was one where he was very lucky. It kind of deflected up um, and it hit the post and it hit off. Farrell went into the back of the net but it was ruled out offside I think. Uh, so he did have a bit of a bad day at the office but at least they don't play Manchester City every week. So you can definitely say that for sure. Everton, a surprise 1-0 defeat to Leeds United, but it has to be said, it could have been a lot more. Leeds United were probably the dominant team in there. Uh, yeah, I know Everton had a couple of goals ruled out offside. I think Rodriguez was was, uh, was the one that had the two goals uh, offside, but even then, you have to say, I I'm going to say this now, I think Everton are... In a really, really poor run right now, and it's only it's only going to get better. It only has to get better for sure. Um, but they're going away to Burnley. I think Burnley definitely need to bounce back. But you, can you see Burnley bouncing back? I just can't. I really, really can't. So I'm going to say that Everton will go away with this game. I'm going to go for a three-one win to the toffees in this one and we have Manchester City against Fulham this is the three o'clock kickoff so this is on BT Sport 
And the last five between the sides of the little 10, five wins to the Citizens. The last result was a 3 0 win to Manchester City. Manchester City, as I've said, were very, very clinical against uh, Burnley. Great hat trick from Riyad Mahrez. Really, really good to see. Even Benjamin Mendy's getting on the score sheet as well, but. Fair play to City. I thought they were very, very good. Could have had a couple more. Could have had a couple more as well. But um, I thought they were very, very good in that game. And, uh, you know, Ferran Torres, Sterling, uh, Jesus um, and uh, Mares. Mares was fantastic in that game. So, really, really good. Really, really good performance from uh, from Manchester City. Can they keep this up on a consistent basis? You just want to, you just want to see them, you know, do that. But... We'll see what happens. Um, Fulham, wow. 2 1 win over Leicester City. But it has to be said, it was very, very well deserved. Fulham were very clinical on the day. Um, and they finally scored a penalty. Yes. Um, Ivan Cavaliero missed his penalty against Everton, took the spot kick at Leicester. He got the penalty uh, scored against Leicester. And that was a very, very good performance from. Uh, the Whites, they are very, very good performance from Fulham and uh, very well deserved. But you are going to the you are going to the Etihad. You're going to be on to an onslaught from the 90 minutes to go. Yes, you know it was a very good victory against Leicester City, but Manchester City is a def different kettle of fish to Leicester. I'm actually going to go for a, a same scoreline that Man City beat Burnley by. I'm going Manchester City five. Fulham nil. I'm going to say Man City will be too dominant yet again. This is a really interesting one. West Ham against Manchester United. This is half past five kickoff on Saturday. Last five between the sides of Zotterden. Two wins to West Ham. Two draws and one win to Manchester United. And the last result was a 2 0 win to West Ham. Well, West Ham are in fine form, sitting fifth in the table right now. Um, very good uh, win against Aston Villa. Ogbonna and Bowen getting the goals for uh, for West Ham as well. Yeah, as I've said, they did have to survive a bit of an onslaught at the end from Aston Villa, but take nothing away from West Ham. Sitting fifth in the table under David Moyes is fantastic. And uh, this is going to be a very good game because, you know, David Moyes coming up against his old club, Manchester United, who... It has to be said, I did watch this game. They played first. Uh, they actually deserved the victory. Um, everyone can say it was a smashing grab, but actually Manchester United, for me, looked the better attacking side. They looked really, really good going forward. Fernandez, Cavani, Cavani, when he came on, changed the game for me. Cavani was fantastic. And that's the thing with Manchester United now. They have a goal scorer in their team. Cavani is a goal scorer. So if they can keep playing him, then I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be absolutely fine. But it was a great victory. Um, interesting if David De Gea makes this game. I know he has uh, he picked up a knee injury uh, against Southampton. So it'll be interesting if he makes this game. If not, it's another chance for Dean Henderson in the Manchester United goal. So really hard one to call this one. But... Just because of that Manchester United victory at Southampton, I think they're better away from home than they are at home, Manchester United. So I'm going to go for Manchester United to win this one. Might be a bit of a surprise to people. I'm going West Ham 1, Manchester United 2. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Manchester United. And we have Chelsea against Leeds United. This is another 8 o'clock kickoff. The last five between the sides of the in Three wins to Chelsea, one draw and one win to Leeds. Last result was a 1-0 win to Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea, how did they not beat Spurs? Basically, Hugo Lloris and good defending from... Uh, from Tottenham, uh, it was very, very, it was e uh, was easy answer there. Hakan Ziyech had one of his poorer games, it has to be said. But Chelsea, um, does Frank Lampard know his best team yet? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he does. But this is a good, this is a good one, I think, because uh, they are playing a Leeds United side, who it has to be said, I think shocked everybody. I don't think anyone expected them to go to Everton and win by a goal to nil. But they did, and full credit to them. Leeds played really, really well uh, at Everton, and a very good finish from Rafinha as well. So, really, really great play from Rafinha, and I think that um, you know Leeds United are going to be really difficult in this game. But 
because of the Stamford Bridge, I'm going to go for a Chelsea win. I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Chelsea. But Leeds United will definitely pose problems. That is for sure. And we come into the Sunday games now. And it is West Brom against Crystal Palace. Last five between the sides result in two wins to the Albion. Two wins to Palace and one draw. The last result was a 0-0 draw between the sides. West Brom getting their first victory of the season. Thanks to Conor Gallagher's strike against Sheffield United. And as to be said. You know, I know Sheffield United had their chances, but West Brom did have their chances as well. Very, very good, <clears throat> very, very good win for uh, for West Brom, and they'll want to continue that. That is for sure. Crystal Pass, you do worry for them right now. Without Wilfred Zaha, they are looking really uh, ineffective up front. I think there's something missing. I don't know if it's. I think it's Zaha. Um, they'll hope he's back because obviously you know from you know COVID etc. He they will hope that he will be back for this game, but it's a really difficult one to call because like West Brom have just got their first victory. You know their their tails will be up, um, and Crystal Palace. You know they're they lost two 0 to Newcastle, and quite frankly they should have had something from the game, but you know Newcastle took advantage in the last few minutes and. Yeah, it's a, it's a really difficult one to call. I'm going to stick stay, stay on the fence with this one. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw between West Brom and Crystal Palace. Could be, could be surprised in that one, but we'll see what happens as well. Sheffield United against Leicester City. Both of these sides coming off defeats as well. There's only been two meetings in the Premier League and they have both been Leicester City victories in the last two games. Last result was a 2-1 win to Leicester City. Oh, Sheffield United. I said that this was a must win for them against West Brom. You do now worry for them. Uh, I think they've got a really hard run in. I think it's something like, it's like Leicester City. I think Man United's coming up as well. Um, so they've got a really, really tough run coming up. Uh, have uh, Sheffield United. I think they badly needed to win that one. But, you know what? Chris Wilder, you know, Chris Wilder, to be fair, he is a good manager, but I wonder if he can turn this around. I really do. It is, it is worrying for Sheffield United fans. It really is. But but then again, I suppose it's a it's a free hit against Leicester City. You know, you, you know Leicester City are coming off the back of a 2-1 defeat to Fulham. And it has to be said, they weren't great. They were not great at all. They looked really, really poor going forward as well. It was only the last couple of minutes where obviously Harvey Barnes got the, you know, the goal in the minute, the last minute. But um, it was really, really interesting to see how uh, how, how bad they were uh, against Fulham. But I'm going to say that they will bounce back in this game. I think it's going to be a three nil win. Sorry, Sheffield United fans. I've got a feeling it'll be a 3-0 win to Leicester City. So we'll see what happens in that one. And we have the North London derby now between Tottenham and Arsenal. Last five between the sides resulted in two wins to Spurs, two draws and one win to Arsenal. The last result was a 2-1 win to Tottenham. Tottenham getting a good 0-0 draw at Chelsea. Mourinho being really hard to beat again, which is not surprising, because he does seems to do magic in his second season, and Tottenham sit top of the table going into this one. So a really, really interesting game. What is going on at Arsenal Football Club? Three defeats in a row at home. Um, looking really, really poor. Mikel Arteta, is he the answer? I mean, uh, Arsenal fans, get your get your thoughts in the comment section. Like, is is it the players' fault? Is it the manager's fault? You you let me know because yeah, again, a very poor performance against uh, Wolves. Wolves thoroughly deserve to win that game. And uh, yeah, Gabriel, you know, I know he scored the equaliser, but he has to do better. Has to do better for the uh, the winning goal. Um, let's kind of uh, you know Podens claim over him almost, but. Um, I will be amazed if Arsenal manage to get something out of this game. I will be absolutely amazed if they do. So I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Spurs. I don't see Arsenal getting any points in this game. Aubameyang, what has happened to him ever since he signed his new contract? I don't think he scored a, a goal or anything. He needs a goal. He definitely needs a goal to you know get back to his you know flying best, but... 
I just can't see it. I cannot see anything other than a Tottenham win in this one. Tottenham 2, Arsenal 0. I'm going to go for Liverpool against Wolves now. The last five between the sides. There was a day in five wins to Liverpool. Last result was a 1-0 win to Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool, I'm going to say this now as a Liverpool fan. We were very poor at Brighton. And that... La- that last minute penalty, whether you whether you say it or not, is a penalty, right? It, it, letter of the law, it is a penalty. If he catches Welbeck, yes, Welbeck goes down in stages, but it is a penalty. It is a penalty, and unfortunately, that's that was coming. And, and I know the VAR is going to be in the dominant headlines again. I, I mean. Look, I think I think they got every decision right in this game. I really, really do. Um, I think the Z- Salah uh, offside is just offside. Mane is just offside as well. Um, Diogo Jota scoring yet again. Uh, the guy is just in fantastic form. Nine goals in 12 games so far this season. Coming up against his former club as well. It's going to be very, very interesting. But they re- Liverpool definitely need to improve defensively. Because Brighton gave them the runaround. Aaron Connolly was fantastic, I thought, in that game. Um, but yeah, they're back at Anfield. So I think they'll be pretty happy with that. 2,000 fans are back in at Anfield as well. So fans are back in at some grounds this weekend as well. So that's going to be a big, big factor, I think, as well. Um, Wolves. Now, first of all, can I just say... I wish Raul Jimenez a speedy recovery. Uh, one of my favourite strikers in the Premier League. Really, really, oh, honestly, that that uh, that clash of heads, like you could actually hear the sound of it. It was absolutely awful, awful to see. Um, but yeah, he has fractured his skull. So speedy recovery, Raul. Um, obviously, we will he will definitely miss this game uh, against Liverpool. But all the all all the prayers in the world are going to Raul Jimenez and. Um, at least he has actually spoken and said thank you to everyone for the, the messages. But going on to the game, Wolves were fantastic against Arsenal. Really, really good. That attacking threat of, obviously, Podence, obviously Neto and Adama Chiori was very, very good as well. Wolves defended very, very well as well. Patricio made a couple of good saves as well. So a very, very good win for Wolves. So Liverpool have to be definitely wary of, uh, of you know, the Wolves' uh, you know counter-attack and especially that front three as well but uh, this is a very good one I think um, I'm going to go for a Liverpool win in this one I think Liverpool will will want to bounce back as well they do play Ajax in the Champions League so we'll see what happens in that one but I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to the Reds in this one and the final game to preview and predict is Monday Night Football and it is Brighton against Southampton the last five between the sides there was all then three draws and two wins to the Saints the last result was a 2-0 win to Southampton Brighton if they had a clinical striker they would have won the game against Liverpool that's not denying that uh, Mope missed a penalty really poor penalty really dragged it uh, to the right hand side of, uh, of that post really really poor but you have to say Brighton played very, very well and were very unlucky not to, you know, take all three points against Liverpool. Um, got the last minute penalty. Pascal Gross, I mean Pascal Gross is a better penalty taker than Neil Mopey. So <clears throat> but very, very well done to uh, to Brighton on, on getting a point. But I said I said it in my match preview with uh, I said it in my match preview with Maz, I said that Brighton should be higher in the league and if they had a dominant striker who could score goals, then they would be higher than the league. But that, that's the reality of it, is that they, they're they sitting 16th right now. Really, really hard hard, hard thing to say, because Southampton are coming off the back of a 3-2 defeat to Manchester United. Ah, oh, dearie me. I mean, 2-0 up at half-time, and you know, Manchester United get back in it with um, you know Fernandes and then Cavani. Two goals. Um, very, very good from them. But... Um, They'll definitely be wanting to go back to uh, Brighton. This is a derby, of course, a South Coast derby. So looking forward to this one. I think Southampton will win this one, though. Uh, I'm going to go for a 2-0 win. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. I'm going to go for a 1-0 win to uh, Southampton in this one. So that is it. That is match week 
number 11 done and dusted as always leave your predictions in the comment section down below and like Shane O'Donnell you will get a shout out in the next video so I'll go through my predictions very very quickly as well Aston Villa 2 Newcastle United 0 Burnley 1 Everton 3 Manchester City 5 Fulham 0 West Ham United 1 Manchester United 2 Chelsea 2, Leeds United 0, West Brom 1, Crystal Palace 1, Sheffield United 0, Leicester City 3, uh, Tottenham 2, Arsenal 0, Liverpool 2, Wolves 0, and Brighton 0, Southampton 1. So that is it, that is match week 11 done and dusted. As I've said, leave your predictions in the comments section down below. And yeah, go over to the description section to see the updated league table. I finally did it last night. So very very uh, happy to do to do that as well. But uh, but yeah, guys, that is going to be it for me for this video. Um, we'll see what happens in this Premier League weekend. But uh, and uh, if you are new around here, then please hit that subscribe button, smash the like on this video. Thank you so much for the views on the last video. I think it was 1.5k views uh, that is at right now. Fantastic. So thank you very much to everyone uh, who has done that as well. But uh, enjoy your Premier League weekend. Sure, there's going to be some very good games. Tottenham Arsenal. Liverpool Wolves, West Ham, Manchester United, Chelsea, Leeds United. Some very, very good games in there as well. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Enjoy your Premier League weekend. See you later. Bye-bye.